Alright you sexy motherfuckers, so we are back on the squatting train, and when I mean back, we never got off. So today is Sunday and we left this training vlog off, what well, made last week, maybe Wednesday I think, or Tuesday or Wednesday. So since last week, or the start of the week, I've done three sessions of 200 kilos, five by five and uh, between 70 and 100 and the 3 by 10 after depending how he's feeling it's friday was open mat at jiu jitsu so we went pretty ham on that i think i did about 10 rolls and i tried to roll it as the bigger people as much as possible a couple of easy rolls with some lighter people a couple of harder rolls with some lighter people who are also much better than me but <laughs> that's the nature of the game and yesterday I was obviously lower in energy, which is normal from training. Uh, someone made a good comment actually in the last training vlog and they said it's useful to see that people don't always... It's like, someone said it's like logging a diary but only talk about the good stuff in your life. So I don't, I don't subscribe to the thing where people say, you know, missing lifts is motivational, but I think it is probably important to hear when things are harder. Now, I don't consider them hard, but it's just the way things are. Training makes you tired and you have to recover. So Friday, lots of jiu-jitsu. Yesterday, I just did 160, five by five and three by 10 and 100, in lieu of the fact that I wanted to go heavier today. So today I will be going as heavy as I can manage on the five by five. So that'll be anywhere between 200 and 230. And uh, I won't be repeating 220. So if I can get over 220, I'll either hit 225 or 230 but I'm feeling good and I think 230 is on the cards, but we'll make the decision as we warm up. I'm gonna do a little hang snatches first and we will see how it goes. All right, welcome to another voice commentary, voice over thingy majig. So let me know what kind of style of vlogs you like best from me in regards to this or any of the training. So, Today we're basically just warming up with some hang snatches. So at the moment, since returning from Japan and Korea, the format of training is obviously primarily focused towards the five by fives. And then I am doing either one snatch or snatch variation, and then one clean or clean variation. Mostly it's just been full snatches, power snatches, and full cleans. I haven't even really done any clean variations. So just working at like, somewhere between 90 and 100 kilos, maybe a little bit more and the snatch and approximately 120-ish on the cleans from the floor, just practicing technique, keeping familiar with it. You know, it goes a massive way in terms of maintaining progress, uh, just doing any amount of lifting compared to no lifting. One thing I'm working a lot on is the upper body mobility. As we know, it did suffer a lot and it is slow to come back. Uh, it's my own fault. And I was only thinking yesterday, you know, how I didn't really notice the shoulders and biceps tightening up and the elbows. And, you know, I felt I noticed the pain or whatever, but I didn't really take any notice because uh, usually when it comes to training, most people who are heavily involved in training and heavily dedicated don't worry about the pain training causes because of pain sake. They rather worry about how it affects their sport. And it wasn't really affecting jiu-jitsu. Now, it actually kind of was because it was very hard to apply any pressure vertically or horizontally against a different surface with my elbows. But as I say, I uh, had a blind spot, so I should have been paying attention. Now I'm paying for it for several months of not doing it. Uh, it's not really affecting my positions in terms of technique, uh, but it does need to be better on the overhead. So the range of motion is good, but those elbows need to come back. Uh, left is... As I mentioned, the Korean physio said I was actually missing a bit on the left-hand side, which I did notice, and I am still doing those exercises, and I know a lot of you want those exercises, but I was talking to that Korean physio again, muscle analyst on Instagram, and he said there's actually a few more he wants to show me uh, once I've progressed a bit further with those. So I will actually hold off for the time being on that video because I might as well show you the full suite of stuff that he wants me to do. 
So just doing some above the knee hang snatches because I was watching Archim Okulov training and I was looking at his 190 kilo hang snatch and I said, you know, wouldn't mind doing a bit of high hang snatches or, but when we say high hang, generally mean above the knee as not hip snatches, which I know some people think high hang means, which is fair enough. So moving on with the back squats, not a huge amount of volume on the Olympic lifts when I'm doing them. Here's 220 on the back squat. Usually the volume is somewhere between three to five sets of two to three. Uh, but given that the frequency is pretty moderate, it's not super high volume. So here we go. First set at 230. And this was without a doubt the hardest set. And you can even kind of see there's less life in the barbell. The squats aren't as sharp. And the bar speed is actually quite good, but usually the first set of these can go one of two ways. It can be kind of heavy because you haven't touched that weight in a while and I haven't touched 230 a whole lot recently in the last few weeks, just as the nature of doing lighter weights and a lot more volume. And once you get the first set done, you know what's going to happen or not. And if generally, if you can do that first set of five and you're not dead, then you can start making your way through them. So second set, massive improvements here. Really trying to work on keeping those hips in. Now, the hip pain, for some reason, was a little bit sore on the warm-up, but there was no pain on the heavier sets, but I was still slightly altering my technique. So I've been stretching my hips a lot, and I think where the issue is coming from is actually a lot of tightness in my quads, and not specifically the hip itself or any of the related uh, hip extensors. Uh, because while they're moderately tight, they're not absolutely crazy. But I did a bit of soft tissue work on my uh, quads uh, down towards the knee. And it is frighteningly sensitive. And I am unfortunately going to have to just roll that bad boy out. And I was doing a bit of soft tissue work between these sets. Just with a kettlebell. And it did actually seem to be improving. So as I was saying, there was no pain on the heavier set. So it's probably stretching out. So it might reinforce my theory this is the third set and i think this is probably the most aesthetic and fastest set uh, the angle actually looks better when i'm watching it back now so a little bit of a drop on the chest like i was talking about whereas tashiki was advising me to correct so i was really working on keeping that chest up so if i can keep that chest up hips in quads driving forward i will have that really vertical squat no change in hip angle or minimal change in hip angle and back angle which leaps the weight nice and centered and i can drive through my legs as much as possible and hopefully for a more consistent squat then i end up with no forward tip no upper back rounding or less upper back rounding and so hopefully i can keep my legs doing as much work as possible keep my torso supporting the weight as much as possible and then smashing those heavier weights so this was the fourth set and for me Number one and number four are always going to be the most interesting sets on a set of five by five. The first set, you don't know what's going to happen. Of course, you think you'll know, but until you start doing that set, you don't know really what's going to go down. Fourth set is where it starts to get kind of real because you know you've won more sets, so you've got to smash it. Generally, by the fourth set, I think you start to see a bit more technical degradation, and that's when you have to fight to keep the good positions. Of course, this fifth set was tough uh, i was uh, not getting as lightheaded as the final set of 220 on the week before but it was uh, an intense set however the bar speed was very very good and very consistent and technically everything was great so i'm very happy with this this is major progress definitely i've never done this before so i am chuffed i hope you're enjoying the series hopefully a lot more good sessions to come and thank you for watching and leave any comments below finished it I am um, look at this fucking sick shirt first of all but covered in sweat so I did it I, I did it 230 I called the number fuck I'm hyped about that so it is what it is there's not a lot to tell you guys uh, first set was the hardest just got that over with and then I banged out the sets every three to four minutes a little bit longer, I think like four to five minutes on the last set while I looked for a new song. <sighs> Listen to Seek Sound Metal. Um, yeah, you can see I'm even kind of flushed. That was, uh, that was 
easier than the second round of 220s. Of course, they might by 10 after. Um, that's definitely an all-time 5x5. I've never done 230 5x5. I'm so sure of that. Uh, by myself in the shed, knowing you guys be watching. I fucking picked terrible angle. I just looked at back the the fifth set way nicer from dead on Nobody's squat looks good. Maybe well, Tashiki's probably looks good from front, but why did I pick? Remind me next week to not do that because that was a fucking terrible angle. Anyway Let's keep it rolling. Not a lot to say. Thanks for watching guys.